Good afternoon, everybody. Today, I'm gonna to be taking the Polar Vantage V2's running test. All right, now, I think this test is basically an outside version of a VO2 max test. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a warm up, then I'll hit the button to start the test, and then it's gonna have me running. A lot of traffic. And it's gonna have me running at progressively faster speeds. I've synced up my heart rate monitor, my stride foot pod, got my dancing shoes on. Let's see how it goes. All right, now I'm running already too fast for this. It does have me like, it's going pretty quickly. Like every couple of seconds, it's asking me to run a little bit faster, a little bit faster, but my current pace is already like faster than what it's asking me. So I got to slow down a little bit and we'll get to it. is what it's asking for. Still a little hot. We're getting there. To, it's asking me for seven minutes, four seconds per mile. Turning it around should be a little bit easier. I'm going a little bit downhill now. I reached the minimum test time. Just beeped on the watch. So I'm gonna keep going. Let's see how much longer I can keep this game up. Thirty per mile. Six twenty-eight. Had some issues with the battery and the GoPro. Missed out the last minute or so. And the test got down to like five fifty-three a mile pace and I gave up. I mean I guess I probably could have in theory gone harder through a race or competing. One of the limitations of any VO2 max style test but uh, that was good enough for me for today. All right now for a cool down on the way home and then we'll check out the results when we get back to the house. Two point five three miles total, eight minutes, two seconds per mile, and one hundred fifty beats per minute on average on the run test of the Polar Vantage V version two. Now, what this test is is basically it's a VO two max test without having to get on a treadmill in a lab with all the stuff on your face, and uh, it's my first time doing either a real or simulated VO two max test like this. But before I get to my thoughts on how it went, I do want to go over some disclosures. The Polar Vantage V version two was a watch that was sent to me for the purpose of review. Uh, I didn't have to pay for it, but no one's paying me to make this video or to use this watch. And no one's gonna get a chance to preview my footage or my thoughts until you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. With the disclosures out of the way, let's talk about how the run test went on the Polar Vantage V 
version two. So the way that it was set up is you pick a pace to start at. And I picked nine minutes per mile for my starting pace. And I didn't really know if that would be too slow or too fast. I think if I were to do it again, I'd probably pick a faster one. And then periodically, and it, it basically felt like it was constantly creeping up. I thought it was gonna be like, you know, run for like 30 seconds at a pace, it increases to another pace, run 30 seconds, and then, and then increase again. I thought it'd be more stepped, but instead it just felt like it was constantly creeping up faster and faster and faster until by the end, I was just struggling just to kind of keep up with it. Uh, although for the most part from the beginning, I was like way faster than it needed to be. So I think there's a little bit of skill involved into running this kind of test or at least running this way. Cause I've certainly never run where I had to like constantly move slightly faster than I was a couple seconds ago. But all that aside, I got the test done. Um, I was able to make it until I think about like five minutes, 53 seconds per mile as the final pace that I needed to go at. Once I saw that I wasn't really hitting it very regularly, I was like, all right, that's enough of that. So I think I was running like six minute, five seconds per mile. And uh, so I was like, that's pretty far off the mark. So let's cut it right there. The numbers it gave me were pretty much right away. Like, I mean, I still did the cool down afterwards, so I didn't see my numbers right away, but I went into the cool down. And then basically uh, when I was done with that, it was able to calculate the numbers right away. So here are the numbers that it gave me. It gave me uh, a maximum aerobic speed of six minutes, four seconds per mile. And my understanding of what that means, it's kind of like the velocity at your VO2 max uh, or the slowest speed at which you could be consuming your maximum amount of oxygen. So that's six minutes, four seconds for me. It also gave me an MAP, a maximum aerobic power of 372 watts. Now I was using the stride foot pod for that. So, um, the numbers are probably gonna be a lot different if I were using just the wrist-based power on the Vantage V version two, because Polar's wrist-based power always tends to be like a certain number, like several tens higher than whatever the Stride Foot Pod gives me. But with the Stride Foot Pod in this run test and the Polar Watch, I was able to get 372 watts of maximum aerobic power. Now, I don't really, under, I'm gonna be completely honest, I don't really understand what that number means. I've tried to do a little bit of like cursory research to figure it out. I've also looked at the graph and at no point during today's run did I hit 372 watts. So they're doing some sort of calculation there to figure that number out. But 372 is the number I got. Uh, my max HR that it gave me was 177 beats per minute, which I thought was a little bit low. Based on, I've recently done a 5K time trial and an 8K time trial. And I certainly saw at least blips of my heart rate at like 181, 182. I thought I was more sustained in that region. Cause I think that like max heart rate doesn't, you're not looking for like, what's the maximum like peak, even if it was just really momentary. It's like, what's your maximum kind of like sustained heart rate. I thought it was closer to 181, 182, but it's telling me 177. My average for the entire test was like 160, I think. And all that combines to give me a VO2 max of 56, uh, which put me in like the elite category, uh, at least according to the watch. So that really doesn't tell me all that much. So one of the books that I have in my running library is Jack Daniels Running Formula. And that book has tons of tables uh, that correlate like VO2 max figures with like times so that that might uh, line up with. And a VO2 max of 56 for the 5K lines up with 18 minutes, five seconds. For the half marathon is one, hour 23 and for the marathon is 253.20. So uh, VO2 max is something that can change over time depending on your level of fitness. So it's a, a really good measure of how fit are you right now. And I recently did a 5K time trial and I was closer to like 1940. I was like in the 1930s for that 5K. So I don't really think that that's a 56 is like the right number for me. But at the half marathon number, 123, 123 and change is actually my half marathon PR. Now I'm not in half marathon PR shape right now, but it's not so far off. Like 1805, I don't think I've ever run 1805, but 123 is a number that I haven't hit yet, but I do think it's a number that I can hit. 
And then for the marathon, 253.20 for the marathon is definitely not a number that I've ever hit before. It's not anywhere close to a number that I've hit before. Uh, my my marathon PR is 301, like high 301, 302 basically. And that was on a downhill course, a big downhill course. So, uh, and I'm definitely not in that kind of shape right now. So I'm thinking like maybe the VO2 number that it gave me uh, 56 fits kind of in some places more than others. I tend to really enjoy the half marathon distance. Maybe I'm just naturally more fit for that, like my body fits for that better. And that may be the, maybe the VO2 max number is right. And the half marathon is where it like kind of lines up for me. If I look at some of the numbers, I mentioned I did a 5K time trial recently and basically line that up, then the VO2 max that corresponds to the more recent time that I had, around 1936, that corresponds to a VO2 max of 51. Then if I extrapolate that back out to a half marathon time, that's a half marathon time of 130, which is, I'm not sure that I could even run that right now, but that's a little bit closer to what I can run right now. And that marathon time is 307.39. Again, I don't think I'm in even 307.39 shape right now. Uh, but it's at least a little bit more realistic and those numbers all kind of line up a little bit better. So here's the thing that I'm gonna do with that to kind of figure out how accurate is this. Uh, a couple of videos ago, I talked about how Stride the FootPod has a new subscription service. They're trying it out. It's free to everyone who has a Stride FootPod to use. So I'm going to, uh, I've been, I signed myself up for a 10K training plan. So over the next five weeks, I'm gonna be doing some 10K specific training. Over the course of those weeks, I'll do this test again to see like how my VO2 max changes and we'll be able to see like where the numbers fall. So for a VO2 max of 56, that corresponds to a 10K time of 37.31, which is, I, I haven't ran that many 10Ks before, but I can't even imagine running that fast. A 10K of 40 minutes and 39 seconds does correspond, however, to a VO2 max of 51. And before everything got all weird in 2020, uh, running a 10K in 40 minutes was one of my goals for this year. So we'll see if I can get anywhere near the 40 minute mark, I'll be pretty happy. So that's my experience so far with the Polar Vantage V running test. I'll be doing it a couple more times. Hopefully I'll get better at it. I might start it at a little bit of a faster pace than nine minutes per mile. So that way I'm not spending so much time struggling to kind of like keep at the right pace. Uh, I could just kind of like cruise into a little bit of a faster pace a little bit sooner. So we'll see how that goes. If you have any questions about the Polar Vantage V2 and the run test, feel free to put them down in the comments down below or better yet, come on by the live stream. I do a live stream every day here on YouTube, 3 p.m. Central. You can feel free to ask me any questions you like and I hope that I will see you there. That's all I have for today, everybody. Oh, the one other thing, this is an idea that came up in the live stream. So uh, one of the things that we'll talk about, one of the things I like to do is have a word of the day. And the, for the long time, the word of the day was SL20. Yeah! I was like, we got, we got to change that because it's been SL20 for like four or five months now. So the word of the day for today in the live stream for the October 8th live stream is going to be VO2 max. So if you say VO2 max, that'll be the word of the day. We'll get a sound. It'll be awesome. It'll be funny. We'll see if that actually happens. So something we're going to try out for today in the live stream, just to make the video and the live stream for the day kind of mix or like kind of go together a little bit, have a little bit more continuity. We'll see how it goes. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?